In this exercise, we'll be exploring the Quick Selection tool, how to use the Refine Edges feature, as well as introducing you to Adjustment Layers and Smart Objects. I've got two files open here right now, one that's fairly complete and one that we will begin from scratch to introduce some of these features. Right now I'm looking at the finished file with multiple layers and you can see here in my Layers panel I've got, if I turn these layers off, I've got a gradient fill background. I'll also show you how to do a gradient fill layer. Then I've got the subject on a separate layer. And you'll notice here that I've actually created a layer mask to isolate the girl from the background. And then I've got what are known as adjustment layers directly above here. And I can tell they're adjustment layers by this little circle with a line through it, if you will, as an icon. And if I turn these on one at a time, you can see some subtle changes. I've kind of brought out some more of the contrast in her face and in the skin tones. And you can see here there is also a layer mask attached to that. And then an overall adjustment layer for everything, which uh, uses the uh, adjustment called curves. And if I turn that on, you'll notice that it, again, provides me more punch to the image. Now I'm going to go over to my new file and we'll start to create some of these things. got a file here that you'll download called girl.jpg. It's a simple image of a, a woman on a white backdrop. And right now, it's a single layer, a background layer. And I can do a few things here. Uh, what I think I'll start with, though, is the quick selection tool. Isolate the backdrop, the white background, from the subject, if you will. Now, if you look over in your tools here, you can see we've got the quick selection tool right here. If I highlight that, you'll notice that I have a circle with a line through it. If I start clicking, it's going to analyze the pixels within the circle, and that line should turn into a, a cross here once I start clicking on it, and that is the center point. So the idea is to just drag around the area you like to isolate. Then what I will do is I'll go up here to one of these three icons and either add to my selection or delete from. And I'm glad I went up here because I can see right now it's currently set to subtract from selection. I'm going to set that back to normal, new selection. And that actually explains why I had that minus symbol inside of my icon. I can see here now I have the plus symbol. And I'll just click and drag to begin. You can see how it kind of grabs things. Now it's over grabbing a bit, but I can come back and adjust that. But you saw how fast it created that nice line around the hair and the face. Now I want to add to this. There's two ways really of doing this. One is to go to the Add, and I can see by default it actually jumps to it, which is really nice in this newer version of Photoshop. Otherwise, it could also use my Shift key to add to any selection for any selection tool, for that matter. So since it's already set to Add to Selection, I'll simply go to the other side here, click inside, and drag around to isolate the area. And it was fairly quick because it's a flat color, so in fact it's having a very easy time analyzing those pixels. However, I do need to adjust my selection over here. It's probably prudent to zoom in. I'm just going to go Command Plus on my Mac here, and then Space Bar to drag up. I'll go to the Subtract from Selection, and just carefully drag around in here. Now, I can even refine this a little further. Maybe I can try to come in here and get close. And ultimately, when I create a selection, I can use my paintbrush to truly refine it on the mask layer. Now, I'm going to refine this edge a little bit here using the Refine Edge feature, which we'll just touch on. We'll get much more in depth on it on another lesson. But just to introduce you to it, I'm going to zoom back down here for a bit and go up to my Select pull-down menu to Refine Edge. Of course, this with the selection still currently alive. And you can kind of see the edge here a little bit that's showing. I'm just going to go to the middle section here called Adjust Edge. And I would suggest just through trial and error and, and moving the sliders around, you will discover the differences here. But I can smoothen that edge a bit. And it might be good to zoom in on it. I can soften that edge using the Feather feature. I don't want to go too much on there. Of course, I can provide some contrast. Probably the more powerful of all of these is the shift edge, which either will choke or expand your selection. So if I go to the left, it kind of brings it in a bit further, as you can see by what's revealing. And that's probably too much. I'm just going to go until I can see a hairline, basically. 
And I'll say that that's, let's see here. That should be good. I can click OK. Now I do also realize that my selection right now is, if you will, selecting the negative space, the background space. I actually want to select the subject matter, in this case, the girl. So now what I want to do is I want to actually put focus on the subject. Right now my selection is, in fact, the background. So I need to invert the selection, if you will. So I'm going to go up to Select. And you see we have a command called inverse. This will make whatever is selected unselected and the opposite. So if I go inverse, you won't really notice a big difference. There was a mild shift in that line, but if I zoom out here, you do know, can see that the subject matter is now the selection and it's not the background. Now based on this, I'm going to generate a layer mask. And it's as simple as going down to my icon called Add Layer Mask and clicking on it and it applies it in my layer. And I can see a representation of it with the icon of the layer mask. And I can also see the transparency uh, checkerboard showing through where I was masking the background out of the image. Now, right now, I could put a layer behind this, which is what I will do, and create a little gradient to sit in the backdrop. If I wanted to go and refine this mask, though, I could go into the mask layer, highlight it, Option key down on the Mac, Alt key down on the PC. And literally with my paintbrush using black and white ink and changing my brush size, I could go and make adjustments to this. I'm going to go back to my selection tool though, and I will highlight the actual layer icon as well. So my next step now is to create a gradient field. I could do a gradient on a regular layer, but just to a introduce you to the gradient fill feature, the gradient layer, I'm going to do it this way. So I will go up to layer, new fill layer, choose gradient, I'll call it gradient fill one, the default name, click OK, and I can see my gradient types here, I'm going to click on here, I'm going to go foreground to background, which is the colored chips in here, now I may want to change these chips, but I'll leave it like that for now and I want to make it radial. And you can see here the dark is in the middle, the light is on the outside. I actually want to invert that. So I'm just going to click reverse. And if I want to adjust the ramp, I can actually grab the angle slider. And you can see how I'm getting more light color from the center poking out. Now I'll click OK. Now the problem here is the layer is on top of the subject matter I want it to be behind. So I can simply grab that layer by the layer icon and drag it and reposition it down there. Again, if I wanted to go in and re-edit that, I could double click on that icon, call up my gradient fill, and make some changes. I could change the ramp, again, which is subtle. I could change all kinds of things in here. I'm going to go back to my original intention and click OK. Again, a good time to save. Now I've got two layers, one a backdrop, if you will, with a very subtle gradient, and my subject matter in the foreground with a mask allowing for the backdrop to show through. Now let's say I want to make some adjustments simply to the subject matter. I'm going to add what's known as a adjustment layer. I'm going to just show you the difference here. We can ultimately go to Image Adjustments and do one of these changes. For example, I could go Brightness Contrast and just go crazy on that. And that looks pretty good, but I'm going to tell you what the distinct advantage and disadvantage of this. If I commit to this, I've actually changed the pixels on my layer and I've committed to that change. And the only way I can get back to this original version is to do an undo or a series of step backwards or revert my file. But I just want to create a, an adjustment layer, which is a layer that is non-destructive. And I think the best way to do that is just to show you. OK, so I think what I want to do even before I apply the adjustments layer is isolate the neck and the face. I just want to create some change in the skin tones, if you will. So I'm going to go back to my quick selection tool here and just drag around in this neck area and in the face until I basically isolate 
the whole face. And I'll just go and add a little bit to this selection here up in the ear. And that should be good enough for what I'm trying to achieve here. So I've created a selection that's currently pending. Now I'm going to go and create an adjustment layer. Now the nice thing here is because I've done the selection already, it's going to automatically create a layer mask for my adjustment layer so that it will only create the adjustments within the borders of the selection, if you will. Now I have two areas I can apply the adjustments. One is in the panel over here, and if I scroll over the different icons, you can see little hints show up with respect to the names. Now I'm used to using the bottom pull down menu which only shows the names, but whatever your preference, if you like icons, you can use the panel. I'm going to go to the names and I will choose the adjustment called levels. Now let me briefly explain this adjustment, but I'll also point out there's my adjustment layer and there's the mask that is being applied to that adjustment layer. With respect to my properties on levels, I have three sliders in the middle here that I'm going to use. The left slider, the dark one, it, uh, adjusts my dark tones. The top slider, the light one, adjusts the white tones. And the middle one adjusts the gamma, which is the middle tones, if you will. So I can see there are no black pixels, pure black pixels, but I can actually bring that slider to that first set of pixels, and it will actually basically create a black pixel on the darkest pixel. And I can do the same with the top, although I see there are a lot of light pixels already. But if I pull that in a bit, it does start to blow the image out. Now the big one, I think, for me is using the gamma slider in the middle. And if I just exaggerate here, you can see how that really can affect the quality of my image. So I'm just going to go up a little bit here, like this. Now if I want to see what it looks like without that applied, I can just go to my layers and turn off the layer. And that's the beauty of this. I can toggle it on and off. I can actually change the opacity so that it's only really applying 50% of that effect in this case. I can change the, the blend mode, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but I can actually change the quality of the layer as well. Now right now, as I'm looking at this, the way an adjustment layer works is it applies to all the layers directly below it. So right now, this adjustment layer is working on the subject matter layer as well as that gradient layer. If I want to isolate it just to the subject layer, I can go over it. And if I go in between with my Option key down on the Mac, I'll see my cursor changes. It's the Alt key on the PC. And I can click it. And I'll see this little arrow pointing down. What that means is this is only affecting the layer directly below it now. Now I can go back to that layer. And I can apply a second adjustment layer, if you will. No selections have been made, so it will affect the whole picture plane, if you will. So with that selected, it's going to generate a new layer directly on top of that. And let's just try, let's say, we'll try curves. Now, because I already isolated the adjustment layer to be attached to this layer, this one defaulted to this. If I want to undo that, and this applies to all adjustment layers. I just do the exact same thing. I go to my Option key on my Mac or Alt key on the PC, and I click it. And you can see here it undid both of them. I'm just going to go back and click both of these so that they're only applying to the pixels on the layer directly below here. Now this one is even more isolated because it's only applying on the pixels within the mask area. So it does get a little bit complicated, I guess, or as I'd like to say, sophisticated in the control that I do actually have. Now again, if I can see there's a little bit of a, a line showing here. I could go and adjust that mask as well by clicking on that mask with my Option key down. And I could go in with my paintbrush and I'll adjust the size and the softness and even the opacity and just sort of paint up a little bit into there. And then go back here 
Now this is looking pretty good. I'd like to introduce you to another feature in our layers, and I'm going to use the subject matter layer to demonstrate this, which is currently highlighted. If you look up here, we have a number of different blend modes to, uh, to blend with all layers that are directly beneath it. So the best way to demonstrate this is just to pick a few and show you. Multiply is like adding all the ink to the layer below, if you will. If I click multiply, we actually lose all our whites because it's adding on to all the pixels that are below. And in this case, there was a yellow hue going through the gradation. I'm just going to show you a few of these, but I invite you to experiment with another one commonly used is called overlay. If I show you a screen, and then we get some dramatic ones here, color dodge, color burn, which has a rather nice distinct effect. But these are known as blend modes. Divide, subtract, Again, what I invite you to do is just to play with these and see what you can do with them. I'm going to set it back to normal. Okay, so those are what are known as blend modes. So that pretty well wraps up this exercise. So what I'd like you to do for me today is just to create a couple of adjustment layers, create a layer mask on the subject layer itself so that you're isolating the background, create a gradient layer that goes behind it and you can choose whatever colors you like. I would suggest the lighter colors probably look better. And again, just create two adjustment layers and make sure that they are associated with the subject layer only. Again, by using your option key on the Mac, alt key on the PC, in between the layers basically to sh show this little arrow. If the arrow is not there, then they are not associated with any particular layer, but with all layers below. And I want you to isolate just the subject matter layer with your adjustment layers. And that is our assignment for today.